Okay, so everyone, welcome back to podcast Ngobrolin Startup and Technology. And today we have special guest Ajay Gore. Ajay uh, is currently is acting as operating of partner in technology in Sequoia, India. Ajay started this role since August 2020, and prior to that, Ajay in 2015 was head of engineering in Gojek. And after that, on 2016, Ajay started working as Gojek Group CTO until June 2020. So I would like to uh, greet Ajay. Thank- thanks, Ajay, for joining this session. How are you doing right now? Hey, thank you. Uh, I'm doing fantastic, actually. It was uh, one of those days when things just can't be better. So it's today is like amazing in a lot <laughs> of sense because... Today is my like after a long long time. Um, it's after a long long time I have been able to like say exercise or do something like for like last three continuous days. It's like much big achievement in my life today. So I'm really happy. Anyway, cool. um, yeah, can't be better. Uh, things have been fantastic. Uh, now there is a ray of hope coming in. Uh, vaccines are coming out and like, positivity and like always the COVID which was always in front or back of your head all the time mm-hmm. is kind of uh, we are having a chance to um, stay away from that and focus on yeah. something something better yeah. so yeah that's what it is so yeah. can be better <laughs> thank you so i would like to say thanks also to sequoia uh, to make this episode possible because actually uh, this episode has been planned long time ago <laughs> but we just had time right now so i'm really thankful for everyone uh, and yeah i think I will start uh, with the question. So I will have two type of topics. The first one is about uh, engineering leadership, and the second one is about your current role in Sequoia. So I will ask a couple questions uh, on those topics. And yeah, I will start with the first question, Ajay. So as a former group CTO in Gojek, so how do you make sure that your engineering skills stay sharp? So you know that every day there are so many people come to you talking about businesses managing team managing people but at the same time i believe as cto you also need the engineering knowledge right so how do you make sure that your skills stay sharp okay so look i i believe that uh, engineering is a is a like not engineering whatever we do is a craft uh, we means every human whatever we do is a craft and if you if you fundamentally believe in that logic Um, then the only way to keep your craft going better um, is is by honing the skills or by going and doing it every day. Okay? And I always say this is like like um, there is a software engineering as a craft is a very different way of looking at it. Um, and if you if you look at us right. Um, somewhere we are called knowledge workers, all of us who are working on something which is not very physical labor intensive, is a is a knowledge worker. It's using brains mostly. How how do you become better of anything when only brain is involved? Is by using the brain more and more. And the only way you can use brain more and more by practicing more and more and putting brain more and more tasks. So given that. Um, My career, I started when I started writing code. Also, I was, I was writing C, C plus plus code, right? Mm-hmm. And today we rarely use C, C plus plus. And like they, I have seen languages, like literally languages, getting invented in front of me, and then we are using it. Yeah. Like if you look at recently, I can talk about like only three languages or four languages which actually came in front of me, just like Dart, Swift, Kotlin, and Go. Oh. Uh, And and uh, we are using it. The only way we could do it by keep keep doing it. So learning, learning is the only thing, in 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 life, uh, generally for everything else. So, so yeah. So even in your uh, city or time, you still do coding. Yes. So one of the things uh, which was crazy <laughs> about me that I believed, and I still believe, I still believe, I always believed um, that that we should be um, hands on. Uh, that being hands-on uh, can be like uh, say 10% or 20% or whatever. Um, it doesn't have to be like 100% hands-on okay. because you have a bunch of other things to take care of in life. But uh, point is being hands-on is important. Okay. Being able to hone those skills is important. See, I 
I personally believe that if you don't know how a paradigm or how a language works, how would you be able to tell people? It's not only for CTO, it's for everybody in life. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Thanks for the answer. So I'm gonna go with my second question. So I'm uh, I have something to uh, tell. So my observation. So I recently joined Gojek, probably last year, and then from my observation, I found out that there are several open source and internal tools that uh, was built internally. So for instance, Barito. You must know Barito, right? And Barito is a centralized logging platform that we made ourselves. But as we know, actually. There are a lot of existing solutions out there can also do centralized logging. Like let's say for Google Stack Driver, AWS also have their own centralized platform uh, for logging. So at that point, why do you think that we should develop our own solution while there are existing solution out there? So my reason of asking this is because the current leadership strategy is more like leveraging managed uh, services. So I'm curious about how did you came up with this decision a couple of years ago? Okay. Um... I think you should talk to Gio about it. <laughs> I talked with Gio, but I, I just want to hear from you actually. So that point of time we were, when we were looking at logging systems, um, we clearly had, uh, I think it must be documented somewhere. Yeah. The, we clearly had a very high speed throughput uh, as a requirement. And none of the existing system we were able to do that. Um, and people might say, oh, what is the, what are you talking about? Um, but it was true at that point of time. Uh, we were looking at, I don't remember, we were looking at around 15K or 16K RPS or something like that. Um, something like that. Uh, TPS. Uh, yeah. And and um, all the tools which we were do, which we were at that point of time, they, they were like maxing out at eight or nine k. I, I I remember very clearly me talking to Geo about it. Other solution was to actually use ELK um, and try to do things, but ELK was just logging tool. We wanted more insights as well, okay. and those insights were very specific to us. Uh, it was that that crazy case of build versus buy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we tried uh, before going on the, that, uh, what you say, on that path, we tried for a year at least, year, year and a half to do something different. Okay. Um, to purchase a tool, to figure out what is going on, uh, talk to a bunch of um, companies and do whatnot, right? Um, but we couldn't not, uh, like it didn't work. Um, and b by the time, the day we started doing our own tool, then everything just started becoming better and better. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was it was that thing, but yes, at that point of time, the kind of requirement we had very specific. Mm -hmm. uh, neither ELK or now existing uh, Google Cloud tools could do that. Also, we wanted a centralized logging mm -hmm. across things, and you know that we are on hybrid hybrid cloud. We had our own data center, we had our own AWS, and we are on GCP. So we wanted a centralized logging, and that was not possible. Okay. So that was another thing. Okay. So uh, I'm curious. Uh, so luckily for Barito, it I, I should say that it's a successful project, right? But what if uh, the effort that we are trying to do when we want to start a new product by our own, but turn out in the end it failed? So how do you mitigate that risk? Oh, we have so many failures <laughs> in life. Uh, I, I can tell you I have seen way more failure, fail, fail products and projects than uh, successful projects, right? Yeah. So you can't do anything. Failure is failure. Um, the only thing, and there's nothing you can take out of it except the lesson okay. and the learnings, right? And the more and lessons and learnings you have, then, then possibility of having more failed projects in the future is gonna go down, correct? Mm -hmm. um, like, think about this, that how, how do kids learn? the languages, how do kids learn to talk and walk? Yeah. Please observe the way um, the children learn to walk the first day, they will be going crazy walking the whole day. They won't stop till the day, till they drop. I, yeah. have, I have two kids and I, I, have, I, I, I was fortunate enough to witness both of their first day walking. Uh, and it is just crazy, right? They just keep walking and falling and walking and falling. And then we, we are like kids, like um, we, the parents tell us like this is hot, 
hot surface don't touch it and we'll go and touch it and like okay we got burned but next time we'll not touch it right so so <laughs> creation again if you treat it as a creation creation is about learning right okay. is a uh, acquiring some skills so uh, like some of the things which we do um i would tell people like i'm not doing it like i have had so many times so many um, conflicts or so many um, kind of uh, amazing fights or soft fights with people in telling i i don't agree i don't i don't think we should do it and people like just trying to convince me and i'm like no, i don't think so. I, i should do it and then i'll i'll tell them why and um, sometimes people have said till the last day saying hey i i think i did not agree with you but i will go ahead with you because i think you make sense or i don't agree with you but i'll do it still do it because you are doing it or sometimes i'll just agree for somebody just gives me compelling reason to do it so okay if it would have failed um yes it would have been a disaster um but uh that point of time we had a capacity plan done we had people and it was done with very very small number of people but they were very smart people so so we kind of and also we had a milestones if those milestones would have not been in place we would have just scrapped it okay yeah if you ask me today um would i use say burrito and gate uh, um i won't <laughs> <laughs> honestly uh but that point of time like when we when i wrote gate we were very very small and only thing we needed was a vpn access and oauth with authentication that's all we needed nothing else yeah because i believe that when we make a decision we make that decision based on the context that we have at that time right context and exposure right yeah. so right. if you know if you know something exists out there why would you build it yeah. um i'm the guy who actually always believes that i am the dumbest in the world and i'll tell you a simple thing if some somebody is writing logs or building log uh with four people building a log software is not something you should do because there are companies out there who have like 200 300 500 people just building the log software so you should have. like for example um uh, we had we had chat right yeah we didn't build chat internally we did it later but for first Three four years, the chat was always given to outsourced, right? It was somebody else. Okay. Correct. Mm-hmm. And the reason was that we know that those people are much much better, um, and they are doing this, right? So we should we should try to balance between build versus buy, and whatever was core is you should build. What is not core, you should try to buy. It's very simple. Okay. Well, thank you for the answer. Uh, now I would like to ask a couple of questions about hiring a senior or engineering leader. So when you are hiring, let's say senior or engineering leader, what are you trying to see from them? So what is your expectation? Um, you got hired into Gojek, dude, <laughs> and I think you got hired during my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why don't you why don't you tell us about your uh, interview experience? What happened there? <laughs> it's feel like I'm being interviewed. Uh okay, I'll in my case uh I got uh, exposure with uh some as uh, let's say mini project that I have to done and they were expected me to do it by how software engineering should have created software so let's say that uh I have to treat a unit test as the first citizen before creating everything and I also have to uh care about couple of things like uh, i don't know probably something like uh, the software design software architecture or probably design pattern and a lot of things so yeah that's what happened when i was hired but yeah it's it was me right so i want to know from no from... but you answered everything whatever i, I was looking for <laughs> okay <laughs> you, yeah, so so so, so uh, you answered everything right I, and the thing is next thing is like yes uh, sometimes we we i i get notoriously blamed or i get notoriously pointed out saying ajay um you set up very crazy practices on like in terms of hiring people and like bar is too high actually bar is not very high it's pretty pretty basic bar in a lot of sense like thing you said software design or architecture right so what we are looking at like uh, mostly around thought process of the person okay correct and the thought process of the person is uh, about like uh, again uh, i don't we really don't care that how 
how good your code is when you are when we are trying to hire you we really care about like how do you think what is your approach right um also i always tell like uh, you are not there there's a town hall in gojek i did it two years ago and i called everybody for recruitment and everything and i just said like look we are here to get as many good people as we can so trying to find um shortcomings in them okay. is not going to help okay. uh, we have to try to find the smallest possible uh, uh, like uh, smallest possible reason to hire them and we hire them with that good intent right so okay. that's what we are looking at like we are looking at i always look at what you know uh, not what you don't know that's that's not something i should focus on because then i can ask you 100 questions and actually if i sit on i always know that if i sit on the interview table on the other side you can ask me like 100 questions about say uh, python or node js or maybe spring boot or okay. spring roo uh, which i may not know today right um because uh, i work at very different languages right now my stack is like say today i like nowadays i work mostly in go and closure and python and ruby and suppose those are the four languages i'm using and nowadays i'm like playing with dart sometimes but but because just to want to have this um, good um, good alternative to react native but if you ask me say start asking questions on things like say spring mm-hmm. boot or spring roo then i will like i don't even know what the means right mm-hmm. and um, i don't know whether you've seen this cloud native foundations landscape uh, this is my favorite slide to show to people have you seen that Oh, no. um, if, yeah. if you go to cloud native foundation um, and to, i think it's a cncf the landscape or something like that okay. uh, it comes with a command of technologies the whole thing mm. it's like impossible to know so i totally understand that so i mostly focus on what you know and how well you know that okay. how curious you are and thirdly like um, what are you doing to upskill yourself all the time okay. and that's it nothing else yeah Uh, related to that so we know that when someone is coming to company that they probably bring a culture that they already got from the previous company right or probably mm-hmm. the the culture that they believe in so what happened uh, during your time uh, how you mitigate if the culture that new people brings into the team is a bit or doesn't fit the existing culture of your team at the time I don't think so uh, we should worry about that okay. culture is a melting pot of ideas and personalities and like uh, whatever like like people's um thought process happiness culture is infectious right okay um if you if you brought a culture so there are a lot of good things which we didn't do in gojek earlier then we started doing there are a lot of good people who came early days from different companies and they brought their culture right they brought the culture of celebration so like i remember early days people used to make a lot of stickers uh, i don't know oh, yeah. whether they still do or not but they used to make stickers for random things like there were stickers made for say me kevin and like john and lot of other people like sidhu um uh, so people, <laughs> i like who makes people's stickers but we had stickers right <laughs> uh, uh we had t-shirts uh, printed with people's faces and and that is good culture that's like celebrating celebrating individuals is very good culture right then there are memes going around on what is going like so we had this famous meme meme is called uh, two weeks and never uh, so whatever we used to do early days i'm really asked like how long is going to take it's like two weeks and it will never get delivered <laughs> in two weeks <laughs> so so, and so there is nothing to shun about it right the thing is um, culture i always say culture is like a uh, the the expression of the org and uh, it only gets better um and and you can actually point out so if you if you have intent and positivity in place and you talk about intent and positivity transparency these are tenets which kind of define culture right mm-hmm. and if you have keep keep having those things within within your system then uh, you will figure out the the what you say uh bad um, fish or whatever how do you want to have bad apple okay. um uh, and uh, that bad apple will always go away because you will, people will not tolerate that the thing is you people, people will give them feedback saying don't, don't do this or please don't do this it's not good <laughs> yeah 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 okay a uh, follow up question so 
I'm curious, what is your opinion about grooming the existing talent that you have versus hiring more senior people? So I came up uh, from a startup where, let's say, there were some founders that I found that saying that we need to hire more seniors because uh, we need to ship our product faster. Uh, but at the same time, probably it's startup that is very small, they don't have enough power or resource, let's say, to hire more people, right? more senior people. So in your opinion, what do you think about that? Okay. So the thing is, I I believe, uh, I believe there is a balance of the what is a good and bad, right? So the thing is, there is always a chance to grow somebody from within 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 company, and I'm very big proponent of that. Um, and you know what we do, um, we do whatever has been done to us, right? Like in my in my career, if I was not given chances, I would have not be what I am today, right? Yeah. So we we have to take bets on people. Um, taking bets on people is is good thing if you are taking bets on good people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you got good people, then take bets on them, give them more responsibility, they'll do better. On the other hand, some things. Um, you need to bring in because they only come with experience. But that 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 gap is going smaller and smaller, right? Uh, traditionally, software engineering industry is only like say twenty years old in terms of production services and all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Software consulting industry is like thirty years old, and software with hardware industry is like fifty years old, right? Okay. That kind of thing. But the industry we live in, where we have so many SaaS services companies, so many things outside. So I always say nowadays, we don't need builders. Um, builders are, we like when I started my career, we were kind of builders where we had to build everything okay. from ground up. We didn't have SaaS. Uh, we didn't, we were, even had to set up our own <laughs> SMTP servers to send mails out, right? Okay. So we are doing everything. Okay. Uh, Today is, uh, and that persona has changed a lot. Now people are more enablers and explorers and like polyglots. Like today you touch at least like five different technologies during your work day as a software developer. Mm -hmm. You write less code and actually enable more code or something from outside. You use more services, right? Yeah. So the persona is very different. Now, um, some of the things will come from exposure and exposure comes from experience and that's where you need to bring somebody from experience. But that part is super small or maybe uh, maybe 30 percent so i would hire like 30 percent senior people from outside but i'll still bet 70 percent on people who are working with me and try to push them force them and like make them better yeah that's what i would do yeah thank you it's a really interesting answer uh i don't have more questions about gojek so i will go to the next topic about <laughs> thank <I> you <laughs> <laughs> i think last question was not about gojek anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. I group it into the question about hiring as an engineering leader. Yeah. Uh, the next question is about Sequoia. So, uh, if you don't mind, can you please explain what is your new role about uh, in Sequoia? It's a operating partner technology in Sequoia, India, right? Are you still doing coding, or what kind of thing that you actually doing? Um, I'm doing. Um, I'm doing both. Um, now I'm. I'm not coding for work but I'm coding for more of the proof of concept or doing something different. Um, okay. So that is one question. Uh, I, I, I think uh, I will never stop writing code. How much or small or big is. I think that's, that's my passion. Um, and uh, it's good. It's good to get paid for what your passion is. So I have, I think I'm pretty lucky in that sense, or maybe um, I find it, even if I would have done something else, I would have coded it anyway. So let's keep that part around. Um, what I do at Sequoia is something which I really wanted to do. So Sequoia is like a very new career for me. It's like a fresh, I, I joined as a freshman. Uh, this new world, but a very different world, right? I When I was looking at Gojek and um, I was thinking what to do, um, that point of time, the biggest thought process was that uh, I was kind of very tired um, and was in very bad shape in terms of uh, health, right? Um, I don't know that, you know, like last year, last to last year, 2019, I like, like, took like two months off yeah. to fix myself. Um, 
and it was kind of okay. And then last year I had, I had a small surgery as well. Um, though, so when I when I was planning to leave Kojak, it was like the Kojak speed is super mm-hmm. fast and it, rightly so, and it should be fast. Mm-hmm. And I was not able to run with it, right? So what you do is you take a break. And that point of time, I was looking at how can I, how can I uh, bring all this experience um, and help people or help a startup. So my primary job is to do two helps. First, try to go and identi- meet and identify people with interesting ideas. So if anybody who's listening to this podcast and got very interesting idea, please come and talk to me. And I'm, 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 I'm pretty good at responding sometimes. <laughs> Actually, most of the time. If you, if you ping me on Twitter, I'll almost always respond. Um, and the second is, once you figure those people out, and then there are a lot of companies which we advise to, um, okay. and I go and talk to them and see if what kind of what problems I can solve for them. Okay. Um, and it's only what I'm doing is I, I, instead of giving my experience to one company, I'm giving my experience to a bunch of other companies. So my job is to go and um, help them understand, don't do things which I did and failed. <laughs> <laughs> or does it resonate with you? Or you are trying to do something crazy, which I did long back. Uh, please don't do that. Or uh, if you do it this way, it might be better or uh, yeah. help them with a bunch of other things. So, yeah. or connecting with them with good people like uh, hiring or like uh, structuring teams yeah. or like helping with software architecture yeah. or helping them deploy ML pipelines, getting, their, getting most values from their machine learning models. So there are a lot of things I can help with. Um, or product prioritization. So there are a lot of things I can help you. That's what I'm doing right now at Sequoia to a lot of companies. So basically, um, if you go look at operating partners definition, it really means that increase the value of the companies. So that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I don't know how, but uh, only time will tell, uh, maybe like two, three, four years down the line, because this impact is only a strategic impact which comes like after like two, three, four, five years. So, yeah. yeah, we'll see that's, how it that's goes. Right. Yeah, I'm cu- also curious about. Uh, so when you uh, work in Gojek and you see Go- how Gojek scales up, and how is it different from now when engineering team face a scale up scaling issue? Is that different? Is there any different probably in terms of anything uh, from previously what you have con- encountered? Um, I wish I wish. Uh, so it is like maybe 10x or 15x difference. Um, if I go back today and do things, I will do things very differently. Uh, let me give you an example. When we were doing Gojek, uh, Kafka was just coming out. Uh, like It was like in alpha. Yeah. GRPC was still like in alpha, right? Um, Kotlin was just shipping up. Go was shipping up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Swift 2.0 just came out. So the thing is, we were kind of going through this. We are kind of giving picks for many, many, many things, right? Um, Kubernetes ecosystem was just picking up to be there, right? Um, so, so I think it's much easier today in, in, in a world where I could use, say, a lot of like control plane tools or microservice management tools or like container management tools, which we didn't exist. Um, much more stable message buses, much better ML pipelines. Like Google has a bunch of ML um, open source, TensorFlow, all those stuff. It just became so, so amazing that I could, I would have been able to focus on more of the core rather than fixing the peripheral stuff. Um, we would have spent more time on developing core logic than actually uh, writing uh, scripts and writing supporting auxiliary software to better support Kafka or uh, writing support like we would have done like maybe Dart the, those days or maybe done React Native much better way. So those kind of things. So I think uh, the ecosystem in last five years have evolved tremendously. Um, the SaaS has exploded um, and the software, ha- software, ser- software services which cloud providers are providing is like more mature. Um, for example, uh, we have more, more uh, a cloud services provider in Indonesia, right? <laughs> right? Uh, so we would have started, uh, we did, did, didn't have to do GoPay on our own data center. 
<laughs> we were just started the cloud service now like we would have saved so many hours managing those data centers and like those servers so so that's what my point is like it's gone this is way better dude like 50x better maybe yeah. okay uh okay relate still related to your existing role so uh you meet a lot of people uh, who started business and start a start innovation and that kind of thing so i would like to ask how to encourage young, young engineers uh probably coming fresh uh from college to i don't know innovate or probably start business do you have any tips for them how to get started with everything like what we are doing right now i think two things right uh, which is uh, which i did a lot of times um so when i get stuck into a problem and i don't know the answer I actually shamelessly reach out to people. Okay. I literally talk to people saying, "Hey, this is what I need." So, I think uh, innovation or passion is about learning. But on the other hand, help is all over the place. Okay. Um and uh, people just need to go and reach out to more people, talk to them. Like for example, if uh, people got ideas and uh, they don't know what to do like talk to me talk to ali talk to anybody in our team and we'll help you out for whatever we can right so so that is one thing like talking to us or talking to many more people will help right i'm sure if you if some if you got an idea and you send a mail to say um, any of the big co-founders of of indonesia they will respond yeah. most probably um they will there's not like they will not respond uh, unless you are looking for a job but if you have got idea you, you have there's hundreds of people who are there yeah. out there to help you out yeah. if you have got a job then you have to go through a regular grind unless you are absolutely fantastic then people will come and reach out to you yeah. so i always say that if you hone your skill and you sharpen yourself uh, good enough then you will always attract good people people will know about you see you can't hide a diamond um, or you can't uh, if you leave that diamond and open it it will sparkle anyway okay so so as long as uh, people know who you are and what you do and the only way they know who you are and what you do if you if you perform and if you publicly tell them what you are doing then things are much much easier so don't hide so my view is don't hide your ideas don't hide your craft and art uh, don't hide your skills um there are avenues for everybody right uh, that like there is a there, there there are avenues for designers there are avenues for data science there are avenues for say um uh, all of our software yeah. engineers like github is there and many many more places are there yeah. go discuss go talk um and and figure out what is what is the next and if you've got something sparkling come talk to us yeah. very simple <laughs> cool thanks so for all of you who's, who's trying to start uh, something reach out to IJ Bali and Sequoia team. <laughs> yeah, and, and no idea is no idea is a bad idea or no idea is a, a, like a, no idea needs a, like huge validation before you can reach out to okay. me or somebody else. Uh, the yeah. reason is that even if you got an idea and you have nothing else but talk and say at least it validates the thought process, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. but do a good good amount of research the idea which is which removes the friction of people's life and the idea is that which removes the pain from people's life which is which the pain is felt by many many people or eases somebody's life which like many many people then it's good idea yeah thanks uh my very last questions uh it's a general question about uh engineering leadership so uh what is the best advice that you can give to engineering leaders out there just one just one um i so the thing is let me put it this way um the way uh, i have found myself um uh, in a in, in with people all the time so there are two or three kinds of leadership mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and i think software engineering leadership is mostly a lead by example or walk the talk yeah. leadership yeah um So my only only advice to everybody, or what I have been doing all my life, I have been walking the talk. Um, so it's like uh, just walk the talk, and that is the right advice. Uh, uh, what it means is that you should be able to uh, see. We we I kind of end of end of day we kind of become coach, mentor, advisor, right? We go through that journey. 
uh, coach is something who is like literally on the ground and telling your mistakes, right? Okay. Uh, mentor is something who you go and ask for something and they keep shaping up your career. Advisor is somebody who you go and say, hey, I'm doing this, what do you think about it? Okay. So we go through that journey, coach, mentor, advisor. Um, every engineer leader goes through that journey and you need to figure out most of us are actually coaches. That means we should know the game so that we can understand and make people better at that game. Okay. Correct? So that's what I say, walk the talk. That's the uh, simplest advice I would. I'm curious because I know that uh, walk the talk is also one core value of Gojek. Is that because you suggest that that uh, failure? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I won't. I won't take credit for it. Okay. Okay. But I know that when I when I came in and uh, people asked me, um, "What do you think, Ajay? What do you think about our engineering culture and all this stuff?" So I wrote kind of two blog posts. Okay. Uh, one of them kind of is out of place right now because we are so big. Um, but I always talked about these kind of values. So there are. I am sure yeah. you must have read that blog post. It's yeah. called Gojek Engineering 101 and what it takes to shine at Gojek. Okay. So those are the I, those are generally very uh, good principles to have across okay. anywhere, cool. not only at Gojek. Okay. Cool. If you're a small startup, it's pretty good. I wrote that thing when we were like 60 people in engineering. So I will try to find uh, that post and then try to put the link on the episode later. Yes. Okay. okay. Please do. <laughs> cool, cool. I don't have any more questions. I would like to say thanks to IJ, to Mbak Alisa, and to all security team for making this episode possible. Uh, I think I will close the episode right now. See you guys. Bye bye.